All right. So thank you to those of you who are here uh, with us and welcome to our end of year planning webinar for administrators. Um, we hope that you will feel ready for the end of the school year and uh, summer by the end of today's webinar. All right, so who is here with us today? Um, my name is Amanda Crooks and I help districts set up their tech integrations and troubleshoot. Um, so you may have interacted with me via email. Um, and my colleague, Morris Tai is here. Uh, he's our senior product manager. Um, and just a small housekeeping item. Um, if you have a question that you would like us to address, uh, please use the Q&A button. Um, and we'll answer either throughout the webinar or at the end. Okay, so our agenda for today, um, we're gonna first look at our end of year wrap up and planning for the summer. Uh, then we'll take a look at managing changes to your data systems and users. Uh, then we will look at uh, TCI integrations and our brand new in-app professional development. And then at the end, we'll have time for some Q&A. All right, so starting off with end of year wrap up and summer planning, um, we'll help you get ready for our June 30 data reset. Uh, we'll talk about uh, your auto roster sync and teacher access over the summer. Uh, so our June 30 data reset is rapidly approaching. And if you're familiar with uh, TCI, you know that this happens every year. Um, and the point or the reason why we do this is to help you roll over your data from one school year to the next. And it also helps us comply with data privacy requirements. So what happens in our June 30 reset? Uh, so the main thing is we delete all classes in your TCI account. And so with that, uh, we delete all student accounts, all of their grades. Um, everything is pretty much wiped other than teacher accounts. Um, but they do have their programs removed when we delete those classes. Um, so one thing to keep in mind, if you have teachers using TCI over the summer for summer school, um, they will want to export student grades on June 29th, um, so they have them before the data resets, because it will be a clean slate on July 1st. Um, so another part of our data reset is that we pause all auto roster syncs, um, and we know the vast majority of TCI accounts are auto rostered, um, so this probably applies to you. Um, so on June 30, we will pause all roster syncs, and then we schedule them to resume um, in the first few weeks of August. And um, we also wanted to highlight a few other key summer dates this year. Um, our Back to School Summit on July 27th. And then we are going to have an Admin 101 Back to School Prep webinar on August 2nd. So just some things to keep in mind. Um, but do know that if you're auto rostering, you can just leave the sync pause and resuming up to us um, by default. And, um, uh, but you can also manage that yourself. All right, so, and this comes in uh, with summer access to TCI because one of the biggest uh, requests we get or questions we get over the summer is how do teachers access their programs? Um, so if you auto roster, you can leave your sync pause throughout the entire summer and teachers will have the ability to add programs over the summer as long as you leave your sync paused. Um, and we know that often, you know, roster data isn't ready for the next school year until right before school starts and teachers want to get in and plan. Um, so leaving your sync paused is helpful because then they can, you know, add the programs themselves and you don't have to worry about anything. Um, however, if you need to leave your roster sync running over the summer because you are rostering summer school, um, you can use your program assignment rules and or uh, let teachers pick their own program so they would link it to their class um, over the summer. Uh, so we're going to show you how to do that in uh, my TCI admin account. 
Um, so I'm here on the admin dashboard. And um, one thing I wanted to highlight real quick here before we dive in is um, some of the features we've added in recently um, that are all related to what we're talking about today. Um, so we have some tours to walk you through uh, some things and links to help articles. And you can also download our end of your checklist here, which is related to everything we're talking about today. So if you forget something, you know, just come here and download this and you have all the information you need. Um, okay, so we're going to take a look at managing our roster sync first. Um, and I can actually get there by clicking rostering here or manage integrations in the sidebar. Um, so when I come here, uh, I see that my roster sync is scheduled to pause on June 30th and it's resuming on August 6th. And if I need to change those dates for any reason, I can click edit, um, enter my new dates and then submit to save it. And um, if I need to leave my roster sync running for the summer, I would come to program assignment rules. I can manage my rules here. Um, you know, if I need to add in something or make changes, you know, I can edit them. I also wanted to highlight a new bulk actions feature we've added to this page. Um, so if I need to do a mass update for my rules, I can use these checkboxes to highlight all of them or some of them. And then I get this bulk actions drop down, and I can change the program for all of these rules or delete all of them. So just a good pro tip to have in your back pocket. OK, so back to our slides. Um, I'll pause real quick, Morris. Were there any questions about uh, the roster sync or um, anything like that? Um, no, I think uh, the questions have been uh, pretty specific so far, and, okay. and one of them is about rules, which you'll cover in the session. Okay. And actually, I just realized I um, forgot one thing here. If you want to let teachers pick their own programs um, while still rostering over the summer, you can turn this setting off, manage teacher program access at the admin level. Um, if you turn this off, all of your rules still apply, um, but teachers will be able to link a program to their classes themselves um, and actually creates a new rule, which you'll see here. Um, so that is something to consider if you uh, want to let people you know, or teachers add their own programs over the summer. Okay, so let's take a look at changes to your data systems and users. Um, so we'll look at a few things that we get questions about um, on occasion, and then we'll take a look at cleaning up your TCI account, um, which is in general, you know, a good practice to do each year. All right, so um, there are a few things that we get questions about, and we wanted to highlight those because there are some of these things that you can do entirely yourself in your TCI account, and there are some things that you need to contact us about first. Um, so, you know, often we get districts switching between roster apps, like between Clever and Classlink. Um, you can do that yourself in your account. And districts that have multiple email domains for teachers, um, this is relevant typically if you have LTI single sign-on and teachers have different emails between, you know, signing in and how they're rostered. So there's a way to manage that in your account. Um, if you are going to change your district email domain or sys, uh, we do ask that you contact us at info at teachtci.com first uh, before you make the change, just so we can manage it and make sure it's a seamless transition in your account. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my admin account. Um, and we are going to take a look at um, editing your roster app first. So I'm here on the Manage Integrations page. And to switch your roster app, you actually can just click Edit here um, and select your new roster app and go through the setup wizard um, all over again. And that's really all you need to do. Um, you will want to look at your program assignment rules too. 
um, which if you have completely different roster data, you know, you need new rules. You can use that bulk actions feature to mass delete everything and start from scratch. Um, so it really is as simple as that. Um, if you are managing multiple email domains and you need to add a staff username source, um, you would just come here again and walk through the wizard. On the second page, you have a staff username source field. Um, so it's not required, but you do have the option to add that. Um, so it pulls from your roster data. So if I'm rostering with Clever, these are my options. Um, and it populates the username field in staff accounts in TCI. Um, so this allows you to have multiple emails on your um, staff accounts, and that should hopefully alleviate um, any single sign-on issues you might have. Okay, are there any questions specific to that, Morris, before I go on to account cleanup? Um, I think I answered it, but I think it'd be mm -hmm. worth kind of sharing with the, the team is just uh, what, what if you had different pause dates, uh, start and end dates, and you want to manage through the summer with CSVs? Is that expected? Is that a problem? No, it shouldn't be a problem. You know, just leave your sync paused, and then you can upload CSVs during the summer to um, you know, assign programs or add staff or student accounts. So that is possible. And yeah, you would just wanna edit your sync pause um, start and end date as well. I think that's it. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my admin dashboard and I'm gonna do my account cleanup. Um, so I'm gonna start with the administrators in my account. Um, and I wanted to highlight some nice features we have here for you um, on the admin dashboard page as well. Um, so I can see actually how many kinds of users I have in my staff. And um, I can also manage settings here. Um, actually, this is a brand new setting we have um, where you can manage how long it takes to like automatically sign out a user in your district. Um, so you could have, you know, after one hour of inactivity, uh, teachers and students are signed out by default or one day or one week. So something to keep in mind and, you know, sometimes it gets hidden here. Um, but you can also manage settings around, um, you know, whether teachers can add their own programs or not when you're rostering. Uh, or our TCI digest emails. All right, so um, one handy feature too is that if I wanna look at my administrators, I can click on this number here and I'm taken to the staff page with role filtered by admin. Um, and so I can see everybody who is an admin in my account. Um, so I can edit their accounts if I need to change their role or if I need to exclude them from rostering, I can do that here. Um, and I can add a staff member. If I know someone needs to be an admin, um, I can create their account and make their role admin. Um, so now that I've done my admin review, I'm gonna take a look at all of my staff accounts. Um, so I just removed that filter up here and um, you know, it's always a good practice to review staff members because people leave districts or move on. And um, we've added in a bulk action feature here as well. So if I highlight multiple staff accounts, um, I can remove the programs from everybody. And I can actually select which programs to remove. Um, I can exclude everyone from rostering. I can unexclude them from rostering and delete them. Um, so this is another nice new feature we've added in to help make managing your account easier. Um, all right, and then I wanna take a look at program access because we've made some big changes to this page as well. Um, so now you have the ability to manage your programs. Um, so we've got a button here or you can um, use the actions over here. Um, you also have the ability to change your program sync settings. Um, so you can only auto roster teachers or exclude a program from auto rostering. So just know that that is there for you. Um, so let's take a look at managing programs. 
So the most common reason you might use this is if uh, you purchase a license and teachers are not seeing the particular program they're expecting to see. Um, so you can come here and open this pop-up and you can uh, just select or unselect the programs you need added into your account. Um, so you will see based on your state content standards, um, recommended programs. So I'm in California. So um, the second edition of these programs are recommended. Um, if I have multiple license types, I can use this drop down menu here to switch between the two. Um, so if I don't need the third edition on these, I can remove it and save. And now um, those programs are no longer accessible uh, to teachers in my account. And, and the only reason you wouldn't be able to remove a program is if it's attached to teachers, um, then you would have to remove it from their accounts and then come back here. Um, all right, so before we move on to the next step, were there any uh, pressing questions on account cleanup? Um, no, I think uh, the only question remaining is about, um, you know, that basically will syncing with Clever keep staff accounts updated and how does provisioning work with Clever? I guess that's how mm. the points work. Okay. Yeah. So if you are um, syncing with Clever um, and TCI, then provisioning would work through program assignment rules. You know, you can set that up based on your um, roster data. So you know, when you add a rule, you can select a number of criteria. You can have multiple criteria uh, based on your roster data. Um, so that's one way to provision, or you turn this setting off and you let teachers do it and they add the programs they need. Um, and it, it does create rules here that you would see. Um, so it kind of just depends on how clean your data is, you know, is it easy to just use course numbers or, um, you know, if it gets complicated because you have, a, you know, unique course ID for each teacher, then um, you might want to consider letting them add their own programs. All right, so I'm going to hand it over now to Morris to talk about integrations in our in-app PD. All right, thank you. Um, so, uh, more questions are still coming in and, uh, Amanda will take care of those as quick as she can, but this is also a good time because most of them are around integrations. So I'll take some pauses and answer some questions along the way as well. Um, so for this section, I'll be covering our integrations from rostering to single sign-on to learning management systems like Canvas and Schoology, and I'll also end up on a new feature that we released for teachers. And we have some uh, goodies in there for admins as well related to professional development. So if you haven't been familiar with our integrations already, um, we do have two very popular roster integrations supported, Clever and One Roster. With One Roster, you probably uh, are familiar with ClassLink one of the more popular um, applications out there using one roster. But more and more, um, we're seeing other applications supporting the one roster API, sometimes directly from the student information system. So Aries, Infinite Campus, Skyward, those are just some of the SISs that um, created support directly for one roster API. You don't have to go through ClassLink. So these roster integrations are great. Uh, I'd say at upwards of, you know, uh, 80, 90% of our accounts um, are created with integrations. And so I, I definitely recommend looking into them uh, if you're not already using them. Um, and I'll, I'll mention at the end of the webinar, our help center, which has really good resources uh, to get started on your own. In terms of single sign-on options, we, I'm going to highlight four of them. Uh, they were the most common ones that we get requested. Um, with Clever, if you're auto rostering with us already, there's no additional setup required. You basically will have your users, uh, your teachers and students log in directly into Clever. And from there, they can click on a TCI 
uh, tile or card or what have you and get into TCI without using a password or login. LTI, uh, that one requires a little bit of setup, but we commonly see it used with ClassLink, Canvas, and Schoology. It works very similar in that um, you can click on a link and get into TCI without using a password and login. Uh, um, and then for SAML, I'd say it's the same as LTI, except that the setup is slightly different. And uh, common apps you would use that for are Google or, or Azure. Um, but they work very similarly to LTI. And lastly, Google single sign-in. This is the button you might see if you're on the TCI login page. Um, this one doesn't require any admin setup. Teachers and students can set it up by themselves individually. And um, it's a very, it's probably, I'd say, because there's no connection to administrators, it's one of the most popular of these four options. Um, that we see used every day. Um, before I move on, one of the common questions that we do get is, can you have more than one? The answer is yes. You, these are just different doors to the same place being TCI. So it doesn't matter if you're using Clever and you want to use LTI and Canvas. We see that very commonly. Um, and it's just up to you as administrators to decide whether you want to let them use multiple ways to get in after you've set them up or be more uh, strict about where you want them to get to TCI from. So totally up to you. Last of the integrations are our learning management system integrations. This has seen the most, uh, I'd say, growth over the past couple of years. The most common ones that we get requests for are Google Classroom, Canvas, and Schoology. Um, where they differ, Google Classroom doesn't require any administrator involvement for setup. The teacher can individually set that up themselves with their Google Classroom account. On the other hand, Canvas and Schoology, there is some admin um, involvement with setting it up so that teachers can take it the rest of the way in terms of setup. All of these uh, integrations, you'll find resources in our help center that walk you through step-by-step how to set it up, how it's supposed to work. Um, the commonality between all of them is that it saves your teachers a lot of time. So assigning and grading, um, the main reason why someone would want to use this is because before these integrations, teachers would probably copy and paste a lot of information between TCI and the LMS or not use both because it's too time consuming to maintain. But if you have it set up, then uh, any assignments you create or update in TCI, um, they'll go directly into the LMS. And any grades that you give for those assignments will directly go into that LMS gradebook. So really, really handy feature. Um, a lot of usage for the past couple of years. Uh, at this point, because it's between the integrations and the new feature I'll talk about, I'll take some questions. Are there any, Amanda? I think you might be on mute. Got too many windows on my screen. Okay. Um, yeah, so there was one about, um, can you have Clever and Schoology enabled together? Yes. So but that's, that's also common. Um, I think the most common setup I'd see between the two is you have Clever working for auto rostering and single sign-on perhaps. And in addition, you might, you'll have um, Schoology for another way to log in, have LTI set up, but you'll also want to um, utilize or have your teachers utilize the assignments and grade sync. So they all work together. Mm -hmm. And there was another question about LTI. Uh, will TCI be moving to LTI 1.3 next year? Great question. So um, our team is working on it right now. Uh, we are on 1.1 and use cases we support are single sign-on, deep linking, and grade passback. However, with 1.3 being the newer version, more secure version, um, we're working on upgrading to 1.3 and also um, using LTI Advantage, especially for the uh, grade passback extension and the deep linking extension. 
Um, so the answer is yes, we're upgrading. And if you can use LTI now, it should get better by back to school. And then one more question um, about do Classlink and Google Classroom work together? Classlink and Google Classroom. You know, that one's less common, but uh, we do have districts using them together. So Classlink is similar to Clever in that you can use it for rostering and sign on with LTI. So those use cases can still work in addition to um, Google Classroom, your teacher, if they set it up, it's similar to like Clever and Schoology in that they'll use um, the LMS for just managing, assigning, and grading, and it should work totally fine. The only thing that I would mention, um, if you are going to use a rostering app like Clever and Classlink, and you have an LMS that you want to set up LTI on, um, you want to make sure you're review like you're careful, not careful, but you pay extra attention to the teacher email address and the student username. The reason why I say that is sometimes you might have two email domains for teachers and maybe even students. And what you what the district sends us in the roster data is one domain, but then the other domain is used as the login in the LMS. Typically, when that happens, um, LTI becomes a problem and set up because um, we look at the email address to match in order to send the people into the right spot. But we have a way to handle that. Um, there is a setting and in when you're setting up rostering to input how you want to set up staff usernames. It's not required, but... If you have two email domains, then you should just send in the alternative or second email convention um, as a staff username. And so our LTI basically will look in the email field or the username field when um, trying to connect the teacher and it should work fine. So that's the only thing I would mention is it's, it's rare to have different information between rostering and your LMS, but it does happen. And that's that's how we, we support you in um, managing that. Well, and do we have any plans to support one roster 1.2? Another good question. So um, the answer is yes. Uh, we That one is more on the review side right now. Uh, still figuring out exactly what benefits 1.2 will have over 1.1 other than more modern and secure frameworks and stuff like that, um, and any potential drawbacks to upgrading. So we always want to be in support of the better stable version of things. So I'd say yes, we will plan to move that direction, but um, it's in review right now. Perfect. Thank you. Um, there's a few more questions, but I'll save them for the end. Uh, okay. I'll let you move on. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, this is an exciting new feature that we're rolling out. Um, we've always had professional development and we've had professional development courses, but for the first time, we're making it so that teachers can access it directly inside of, um, the program inside of TCI. And these are great because they take teachers on a deep dive, doing some challenges to really learn the material, uh, learn how to use TCI, and they do it at their own pace. So the courses, they auto-save, teachers can leave and come back, continue. And at the end of it, they get the ability to download a certificate to get credit for that time, that PD, uh, and they also get to download a badge, which they could, you know, put in their email signature or just show off, print it out, go ahead, wear it around. Um, but it's it's really cool. We have um, uh, a course that's already available and many more courses in the works. What I'm going to show uh, live today is how is that reflected for an admin? Because it might be you, it might be somebody else. 
but most likely someone cares about their teachers getting PD. And so I recommend that if it isn't you, that you loop that person in, let them know that this exists um, and maybe add an admin account for them to look at this, or you can export the results and send it over to them. But basically there's a new page now, uh, professional development in your admin pages. And this is where you can basically manage uh, all of the work. Um, so here I have a few teachers that already completed some courses and I can filter just to see more specifically which course or uh, who did it. But these are all the teachers in the account and you can just track their progress basically. Um, but it's a really cool new feature and I expect it to grow and evolve much more in the next coming years. Um, but since uh, we are at the end of this section, um, we could take any questions. Muted again. Um, one came in about the manage program button. Um, is it not visible yet in uh, most admin accounts? Yeah, so uh, I did see one of those questions. Um, so only admins can see them. So the very first thing I would think about is whether or not, if you can't see them, are you a coordinator role? Yeah. Um, and if you don't know, you could go to settings and check for yourself. You can go to the staff page and check for yourself, or you could email us. I recommend checking for yourself on the staff page. Um, only admins can see that button. And if you are an admin and you can't see that button because you should be able to see it, I would recommend emailing info. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and will we be able to pull in a metadata field from our roster server to allow for a preferred name? That's something we can oh. do or maybe consider. Yeah, um, I'd say it's not something that we've gotten requests for yet. Um, I'd say your best bet is to send in a request at info. We do take feature requests from that um, email address as well, and it will funnel probably over to me, and I will look into that. So I know that as long as you're sending it to us in some field we can see, we have access to it, whether we can put it into the first name or or whatever username field you want. Um, that is, it depends. Anything else? Okay, yeah. Uh, Jamie's asking, can I see a list of the possible PD courses from that screen? So I think from the admin side, mm -hmm. I think you would probably only be able to see the titles from the filter, right? Yeah, so that page as an admin is more for tracking. So you only see progress and completion. If you wanna see a list of what's available, your best bet is actually to get program access yourself mm -hmm. and, and log in and go, because the te teachers will have a PD page. They'll have a professional development page. And you might not know this, but as an admin, you're basically like a teacher if you added a program to yourself and go into the program, you see everything as a, a teacher sees it. So you can go there and, and see the list of courses available. Well, and I think that answered Brenda's question. She has asked, how do you get to the courses? So yeah, it's on the professional development page and teachers accounts when they get into their program. Um, so, you know, if you have access to a program, um, then you should be able to see that as well. Um, and then let's see. Oh, Jean is asking when will all or more in app PD be available? Um, you know, right now we have the getting started with TCI, um, is available. Uh, soon we'll, we will be adding, um, courses on using our LMS integrations like Google Canvas and Schoology. Um, and then we'll have some more deep dive uh, kind of courses coming up. So I would look for them throughout the next school year. Um, you know, we'll be adding them in as they're available. Yeah, the only I would add is that um, our PD team has been pretty good at putting in um, coming soon placeholders. So again, if once you go into that uh, PD page as a teacher and you see 
what's available, you also see what's coming soon and it'll cover what uh, Amanda mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Paul's asking, uh, I have my program mapping done using the course code from my sys. Is there an easier way to map these? You wanna take that or? Yeah, wanna... so I'm not sure. It kind of depends on how your course codes are. Um, you know, typically most people use course codes to map, you know, their rules um, and provision courses or programs. Um, the easiest way might be to turn off the, you know, that setting manage teacher program access at the admin level and let them link it um, themselves. So you don't have to make any rules. Um, so it depends on how you want to manage it, but I would say that would probably my, be the. My favorite way is a uh, class name. Normally, mm -hmm. like I know, obviously it depends on your roster data. Mm -hmm. So best case scenario, your sharing rules are very tight in the roster app and you're only sending what uses TCI and maybe you can get away with just doing subject and grade level. Mm -hmm. Then you'll never have to change it. Um, after that, I see a lot of success with class name because our rules does use a, a contains mm -hmm. filter. So you can have variations in class names like teacher names in there. But if there's oftentimes there's like the subject American history or whatever, you could go off of that and you can probably replace 10, 20 course codes with just a single rule and class name if um, your data works that way. So those are some other ways. Um, and then um, Sharonda asked, are we allowed to assign work from the TCI platform to students? And the answer is yes. Um, if you have a program and a class with students in it, you can absolutely just do everything in the TCI um, platform. You can do assignments and grading and tests and everything. So you don't have to use an LMS integration to you know, assign anything. Um, so yeah, you can absolutely do that. And then, um, yeah, I was just addressing Rita's question too about when will newly purchased programs be added for the next school year so that we can assign program rules. Um, so Rita, it could depend on when your district places their order. Um, if you're renewing licenses, um, you should be able to go in and add the programs you need now or the additions you need um, and start making those rules. But if you run into any issues with that, um, you know, do reach out to us at info at teachtci.com. Amanda, let me uh, go over the last couple of slides and then we can mm -hmm. say oh, yeah. your questions. Um, so one thing I wanted to mention is that our Back to School Summit this year is a single day on Thursday, July 27. This is for teachers to come in. They, they'll they get an inspiring keynote from Adam Welcome. He was great last year. Um, they'll get practical strategies, hands-on training sessions, and also an exclusive preview of our PD courses. And by that time, we'll have many more in the works. So definitely recommend telling your teachers, you can attend yourself, but telling your teachers to join our summit um, it's a, it's always a good time. Um, and lastly, with resources, uh, to let you know, back to school resources, you can find them on this URL. So just our regular uh, website um, with back to school at the end, you'll find resources, including the end of your checklist there. You'll also find that checklist on your admin dashboard. So definitely look for that. Um, our help center I mentioned, um, pretty easy to remember, help.teachdci.com. And we've mentioned this a lot throughout the session. Um, email us if you need anything at info.teachdci.com. Although with those first two resources, I'd say you're pretty good for setting up yourself this year. Um, with that, that's the end of the content. We are going to stay around for questions. Um, so Go ahead, Amanda. Do you have any more questions? Okay, yeah. Um, Teresa asked if um, or when teachers complete the PD in their account, what does it look like for them? So, you know, they get a PDF certificate with their name on it, you know, with the course that they completed. Um, so they can download and print that. And they also will have a badge um, on the professional development page in their TCI account. And right now that was the last question we have. 
So if you have any other burning questions, uh, go ahead and put them in the Q&A. Um, otherwise, we thank you for attending today and um, hope that you got what you need to be ready for the the end of the school year and the summer. And we hope to see you in August um, when we're getting ready for the new school year. <laughs>